Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today, let's talk about the listen button in Cubase 13. Most of us understand what the solo button does when we're working on our productions, but there's another button that's referred to as the listen button. It also has a similar task, but with slight variations. When we hit the solo button, as I'm doing in the mixer, it lights up red, and only that particular channel or other channels that may be connected to it, which I'm going to show you in a minute, are now audible, and everything else gets muted. On the other hand, there's a button here close by with an L on it, and when we hit that button, that's referred to as the listen button, where the solo button, if you were to think of a light switch, is pretty much like an on and off. You could think of the listen button as more like your dimmer switch. You don't necessarily just turn the light on or off, but you dim it. That's what the listen button allows you to do. When you enact the solo button, everything else becomes muted except for the solo button. When you think of the listen button, instead of everything becoming muted, basically everything but the listen button gets turned down. So you can still hear everything that's there, but it's at a lower level than your listen button. And there's quite a few controls that allow you to adjust that just the way you want it. And all those controls are located over in your control room. If you look down here at the very bottom of the control room, there's a little area on the right, and it's called Listen. And it has all kinds of various controls here and things you can adjust. One thing that can kind of fool you, a tab up here that says Main. And if you click on this Main tab, sometimes those controls disappear. And if you click on that Main tab again, then they become visible. So if you don't see these controls in the lower right of your control room, you may have to experiment hitting things until they become visible for you. Now, once again, before we get too deep into this, Let's talk about the control room in general so everybody's caught up on that subject. Initially, when you install Cubase, typically the control room is not active. There's basically two ways you can hear everything in Cubase. One is through the direct outputs, and the other way is when you start using this control room. Let's keep everything simple as we go through this, and we'll just think of everything as coming through a stereo set of speakers. We'll leave all the other configurations for another time. But as a quick review, if you go up to the studio menu and come down to where it says audio connections, you will see various tabs along the top. You will see one tab that says outputs. You'll see another tab on the end that says control room. These are basically your two options that allow you to hear anything when you're working in Cubase. You have to use one or the other of these options. Typically when you install Cubase, it's gonna set things up through the outputs and your sound card will be visible down in this area. If on the other hand, you go to control room, there's a button that turns it on. It's right here. It says enable, disable. And if you use the control room, instead of the output, we will have something that says the monitor, which is exactly the same thing, just a different name. And that's where your sound card will be hooked up. For this discussion, we're going to assume that you have your control room on and you have your monitor set up so you can actually see the control room down here on the right. So what is the main problem that the listen button solves? In other words, why would we use this in the first place? I can only speak for myself personally because I'm sure there's lots of reasons to use this. But where I find myself reaching for it, it's the perfect solution when you've already soloed the tracks. Let me give you a quick example before we dive into all the settings here. In the last video I made where we did an orchestration, I can tell you it got to a point where things were pretty full in terms of the arrangement. For example, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And if you want to start messing with a particular track, you have a very difficult time isolating that. If I solo the track, for example, maybe these trombones, I can work on that in isolation. But once again, I've lost perspective of what's happening with everything else around it. Whereas if I hit the listen button, then I can hear the instrument and I can still hear the music behind it. And as I said, when you're soloing instruments, that's where this button really becomes handy. Many times I've set up a group. Maybe I have five tracks out of my total of 30 that I'm working on in a group. For example, once again, in this orchestration, along with everything else going on, I had a brass group. And when I soloed that brass group, again, it brought things into perspective in terms of my brass instruments. But now I needed to specifically work on this trombone track and I've used up my solo buttons. So what do you do then? Well, that's where this listen button really shines because it gives you one last level even beyond the solo buttons. So now I've got all these tracks soloed in this group. I can still keep my group active, but just dim them back a little bit and work just on the trombones. That'll come up sometimes if you have a lot of vocals going on. 
and you need to hear all the harmonies while you're singing, and you need to just back them off a little bit, the listen button works perfect for those situations. Let me call your attention to this. Typically, always on the mixer, you'll have your listen button right here, close by your solo button. Easy to get to and just click on it. But initially on my tracks, that listen button wasn't anywhere to be found. If I went over to the channel, there was an option there. I could click on it. Many times I'm working right on the tracks, and I want to be able to hit that button without having to work too hard. Right now I have it right by my mute and solo buttons. So if you're not seeing it on your tracks, let me show you how to set that up real quick. This is easier to see if we get the lower zone out of the way for a minute. At the bottom of this inspector track, there's a little gear. When you click on that, it gives you a lot of options of how to customize the way all your tracks look. And of course, your tracks are categorized. Audio tracks, instrument tracks, the sampler track, and on through all of these. Every time you click on one of these icons, you're given specific choices of how you can customize that track. You go to the instrument track, like I was just looking at. Initially, my listen button was over in this category that said the hidden controls, which means it was available to me, but it wasn't visible so I could see it. So I just selected it and then hit this button that said add. That moved it over into this visible category and put it at the bottom of the list. Where it is on this list will determine where it shows up on your actual track. Right now, mine's over here by the solo button. But if I highlight this listen button and I start hitting this option that says move it down and actually hit apply, now that listen button is down here somewhere in the track area. So you can actually pick out the location of where you want it so it works out best for you. Down here in the lower left, you kind of get a preview. And if you don't have enough space on your track, you can come up here where it says the control area width and just increase the columns to accommodate whatever you need. And you hit OK and you're all set. You can do that for your audio tracks, your sampler tracks. All of those have the option to put the listen button on there. The other thing you notice if you actually use this listen button at the very top, just like your mute solo, read and write automation, you have a master kill button. So you can turn all these listen options off with one hit. All right, so let's look at these controls and see how they affect our levels. If I hit the solo button, I can hear this lead. If I hit the listen button, the music dims behind it. If we look at our controls, we have one that says the listen dim, and above that we have another slider. This is the listen level. Listen level controls like our solo volume, or basically the channel that we have listened, or it could be multiple channels as well. And our listen dim controls the background music. Let me turn them both down for a second, and then as I play the song, I'm gonna turn up the listen level, That way I can hear my listened instrument. Or if I turn up the listen dim, then I hear all the music. So your first basic setting would be obviously to set your main listen level, bring up your listen dim. You would go to work at whatever you want. Above that, there's a listen on and off or an enable button. This immediately bypasses everything, basically turns the listen option off. The thing to be aware of is that your main instrument continues to come through all the other instruments as well because that's a mix of the whole song. Just because you're using the listen button doesn't exclude that from the main mix. Now above that you have a button here that says AFL and it's lit up in this case. And if I hit it again, it says PFL. This stands for your after fader listen and your pre fader listen. And the idea here, if you turn this off where it says pre fader, the channel volume is no longer gonna have an effect on this listen. Or in other words, it's basically like turning the fader up all the way. On the other hand, if you hit the after fader listen, where you can change the fader up and down on that particular sound that you're working with. Most of the time I leave it on this after fader listen, but there may be a reason why you want to go pre-fader as well. So listen to this channel as I hit the listen button. You'll notice how the lead becomes very easy to hear, but at the same time I can hear the music in the background. It's a great option when you want to do exactly that, not kill the background music, basically just turn it down. One other thing I want to show you about this before we wrap it up, this listen dim, which is basically the background music, is also available for you to add to a remote control option in case you want to use it that way. If you go up to your remote panel and open it up, you have a category for the control room. If you open that up, there's an option right here that says the listen dim level. If you click on that, you can sign your own remote knob to it or slider. And then as you're working, you also have your remote device controlling this background music as necessary. So the next time you're using a bunch of channels in solo, and then you want to solo just one more instrument on top of that, remember the listen button and see if that doesn't give you just that little extra freedom 
that allows you to finish that mix off without having to make a lot of major changes or reconfigurations right in the middle of your inspiration. And we'll leave it right there for now, and I'll see you next time. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase, and WaveLab, and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we took a look at the listen button. Another option, similar to your solo button, instead of turning things off, it turns everything down. We learned how to enable and disable it. We looked at how to set those listen levels, saw how to configure it in our track settings, and then went through a few different examples of how to put it into use. And we will continue to explore all these different creative options and all the tools that are available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I will see you on the next video.